So welcome back to another video guys. Today we're following the organize and optimize mini series. If you're new here, this is part six of the series. So go and watch part one, two, three, four, and five, which I will link up here for you and then come to this video. Today, we're gonna talk about the knowledge hub. Our knowledge hub is gonna be our knowledge management system, our second brain. There's a lot of different names for it, but basically what we wanna do, we wanna capture and organize every single piece of information that is important and resonates with us into this system. This can be anything from notes that you're gonna take yourself on your phone, from tweets that you see and you wanna save, from YouTube videos that resonated with you and you learned a lot from, course notes that you've taken in your online courses, or even highlights from your books. The Knowledge Hub will allow you to create these notes and literally put the information out of your head into your second brain, and then it allows you to interact with it whenever you want. Another cool thing is that it integrates with every single part of our system. If we want, we can see exactly when we captured what, why we captured it, and how it might relate to some output that we want to create. So for example, if I'm a YouTuber and I want to make YouTube videos and I read an article about the topic that I want to make, I can highlight that article, bring it into my knowledge hub, organize it and write a bit of my own thoughts on it and take that directly connect it to the video that I want to produce and create. And then when I actually go to create that video and sit in front of the camera, I don't have to start from scratch. I already have something to start with. So in this video, I'll give you a sneak peek of that system. But in the next video, we will dive deep deep into the content calendar and we will connect the knowledge hub to the content calendar. So without further ado, let's get into it. The knowledge hub or our second brain is nothing more than a database where we can capture information into, organize them the way we want it, summarize them or distill them the way we want it, and then express it or create new stuff with those pieces of information. This can be a YouTube video that really resonated or an article that we read about a specific topic. I originally learned about the second brain concept and how it can change your life through the Building a Second Brain course by Tiago Forte. Then I went and looked at my system that I created and you have been watching so far, I hope, and I added this element of knowledge hub on top of it. There are a lot of different ways of implementing a knowledge management system. But my goal, as you remember from part one, is that it should be super easy to use. It should be mostly automatic and it should be easy to interact with so that I can use it to create new stuff. So what we're going to do in this video is to go over this diagram that you see here that explains every single part of my system, the code, capture, organize, distill, and express, and then show you the actual database and go over the properties of it so you can set it up yourself. So the first step of our knowledge management system is actually not inside Notion. It is outside wherever we actually read new articles, watch new YouTube videos, and save new things. This is called our capture layer. Our capture layer actually includes multiple different applications. But in my case, I've tried to include only the things that are absolutely necessary. Honestly, I don't care about capturing podcast snippets or things that really resonated with me in a podcast or something that I'm really going to only use once in a lifetime. Instead, what I've focused on is to put the applications and the things that I use on a regular basis. So for me, that's going to be Kindle eBooks, which I actually use my Paperwhite that you see here. That's going to be Pocket, which is going to be a Chrome extension, my Twitter, Facebook, YouTube saves, Instagram saves, and my original thoughts and ideas. So the way I capture every single one of these is slightly different from each other because I actually want to increase the efficiency and reduce my involvement in the capture process. Basically, what I want to do is to just click a button or even better, it's completely automatic and it actually captures and imports everything into my second brain in my Notion. So for Kindle eBooks, for highlights from my Pocket app and for Twitter, I actually use a software called Readwise. Readwise is more like an integration layer. What it does, it, it connects to your Amazon account for your Kindle or it connects to your Pocket account or your Twitter account. And what it can do is that it can actually pull those information from different sources. And by information, I mean the highlights that you actually highlight and pull them all cleanly with the date, with the URL, with all the metadata that you need into your second brain system. By the way, I will make a full video on how to use Readwise later because it is not something that I can fit in this single video. However, I will put their link in the description below so you can read about it yourself. That's part one. The second part for my YouTube saves, Facebook saves and Instagram saves, I actually use the send to Notion extension. And by the way, there are two Notion extensions right now on the Chrome Web Store and make sure to use the save to Notion one by Anis Gad 
and not the actual Notion Web Clipper by Notion. Because the one from Notion itself is actually not that great and it doesn't allow you to choose specific parameters and properties while you go and save those things. That's why I actually use the Save to Notion template. After you actually install the Save to Notion extension, all you have to do is to click on it, then add a form. And then you have to choose your account and add a database. For me, my database is called a library and all I have to do then is to click on it once. Simple as that. You can add the template to the things that you capture. You can actually clip the content if you want and you can add different fields. After you have actually made your form, all you have to do then is to jump on the article or the YouTube video or anything that you want and then click on the button, add the fields that you would like to add and then add it as a new page. That's it, it's already done. By the way, it's also there so you can open it right there and then in your Notion. And as you can see, it's captured in my Notion with the correct link, with the captured date and everything else. And it's actually saved in my library. And you guessed it, my library is what is under my Knowledge Hub section. As you see, I have a library here and that's where I save everything into. You can also see this in the diagram. As you see, all my highlights from Readwise and all my snippets from Send to Notion get saved in my library here. Additionally, I actually use Evernote only on my phone to capture notes on the fly and really fast. What this actually does is that using the new Notion API and Zapier, what I can do is I can capture notes on my phone and they automatically get sent into my library as well. This is quite a niche use and I only use it when I'm on the go, maybe in a bus ride or something, and I wanna quickly capture a note and have it saved in my library later, but don't worry too much about it. Right now, you can also just open your library and create a new page, which I will cover in a second. After the content is actually saved in our library, now we can start doing things with it. We can relate it to our projects, we can relate it to our areas, we can actually relate it to a resource and so on and so forth, and then actually integrate it into our complete organization layer that I've been covering so far. Additionally, what we can do in our weekly reviews, we can also review those notes if we want to. And if you remember in my previous video, I said that that section in our weekly reviews actually has all these notes pulled in for us. So we can come and look at them, compress them if we need to, delete the ones that we don't and, and archives the ones that are not really important for us. And on the other hand, use the ones that actually are important to us and connect it to our, for example, content manager so that we can make a YouTube script out of it, so that we can create a video out of it and so on and so forth. So enough talk, let's actually jump right into the Knowledge Hub and show you how this actually works. The first thing that you need to know is that this library is created automatically by Readwise when you use their integration between Readwise and Notion. By the way, Readwise has a 30 day or 60 day trial that you can use for yourself. And I really, really, really strongly recommend it. They're a great company, they're amazing. And I don't get any affiliates from this, by the way. I use their system completely because it's actually everything that I need for my knowledge management system. And the good thing is any property that you actually add to the system will stay there. And it actually syncs perfectly with every single thing that you have. Just to put this into perspective for you, for example, I have a view of my different books that I've captured in this system. I can read that book on this Kindle or on my phone or on the PC and then highlight different passages for it. Then Readwise automatically connects to Kindle and pulls that information into my Notion system. And the setup is literally a one-time setup that takes about 10 minutes. Then what happens is that in my library under my books, I can see that book already pulled into here. And when I open it, I can see when I actually started highlighting it, how many highlights I have and what areas or projects or contents does it relate to, then I can actually see all my highlights from that book automatically also pulled in here. And the best part is if I ever wanna jump back to the highlight, all I need to do is to literally click on this link and it will automatically open the book at that page for me. And that's super powerful. This is just about books, but we actually have other things. For example, when I capture articles, I can see the full article, the full link to the article. I can always jump back to that if I need to and so on and so forth. More importantly, for example, I have personal notes. This is where I actually write things for myself. And as you can see, I have notes, for example, on how to grow on YouTube or how to make good content people love. And basically what happens, all I need to do is to click on new, give it a name and then what happens is that I can open that page and then fill up the properties for it, the related area, content, project, why I captured it and then here I can start writing my notes.
So let's talk about the properties of this library database first. First things first, we can see that I've captured a lot of different types of things into my library so far. I've captured personal notes, I've captured tweets, YouTube videos, course notes, channel notes, and different things. I actually have different types of properties here for the category. So if I put the property to do on it, it means that I need to watch it. I haven't watched it and everything else is self-explanatory. What happens is that when we automatically capture some ideas into our system or manually write new things in it by clicking, for example, on the new button here and then writing an example, we can actually come and add a different type to it. It's type note and obviously it moves up here. So we have example note here. And after we've made the note, let's say this note relates to the area of health. What happens is I can actually come here related to the area of health. And then I can also relate it to a project. Let's say it's about losing weight. So I can actually learn about losing weight the right way. I can actually relate it to that project. And the next property is the related content output. So the related content output actually relates to our content calendar. And if I, for example, want to make a video about this specific note, I can come here and add the specific video. And then this note will be automatically pulled for that video when I actually go to write the script or to shoot the video. We will cover this next week more in depth. But as you can see, this property related content output is quite optional. I don't only capture stuff that I want to make videos about. I want to, for example, put my thoughts into this. I want to have other things I capture as well. So I only actually relate the content output to the pieces of information that I actually want to use and that I actually want to make videos about. Otherwise, I leave it empty. The next property is actually called why I captured it. It's self-explanatory. What it does is actually tells your future self why you captured this piece of note, because over time you're definitely going to forget what the hell did you even call that note. So here you can just give yourself a bit of more information and know exactly why you captured that piece of information. Also, there is the archived property here. And the archived property is basically nothing more than just archiving the piece of note that you captured. Usually we don't want to touch it from this view. We only touch it from our weekly reviews view and then we can delete the note or archive it if we want to. Also remember that if you go up here, you can actually have different views for every single different category that you have. So for example, if I only want to see my course notes, I can come here and see, okay, I took the course building a second brain. I took the course part-time YouTuber Academy. And for all of those things, I've made some personal notes and actually I've made a building a second brain demo overview, which actually related to all of these things. I captured it because it was a live session notes and it relates to, for example, the area of productivity and the project of building your second brain. I think it's actually very intuitive to use. All you need to do is to set up Readwise once and then everything Thing will actually be imported here for you whenever you captured or when you actually want to make personal notes. And then all you need to do is to just relate it to a project, relate it to an area, and optionally relate it to a content output. And that's about it. If you remember in the previous week, I also said that I will cover these weekly reviews and how I captured stuff once again. So for example, let's just jump into calendar week 28. And if I jump under step two, review what you captured, I can see that, for example, in that period of calendar week 28, which is actually from July 12th to July 18th of 2021, I captured all these pieces of information. I actually was using some of them and I archived the ones that I didn't need. So for example, five landing page hacks that triggered immediate blah, 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 is not so important for me anymore. So I can always come and click on archive and I'll just go away. And then I can see what areas or what projects that I actually capture a lot of stuff for. For example, you can see here that I've captured three times for the area of YouTube. And then I can come down here and actually write what did I consume too little of? What did I consume too much of? What do you want to consume next week by reflecting on what I consume now? And actually, what are my goals? And then I can actually rate my week from one to 10 for what I actually captured. But that's about the library. It's not so complicated. But the other cool thing is if you, for example, have a project, let's say consume content about emotions and feelings and try to understand yourself. This is a project that let's say I'm currently working on and I go and read an article about it and I watch a YouTube video about it and they really resonate with me. What I can do is that I can automatically capture them into my knowledge hub and then connect it to my project by literally, as you saw, by clicking on the note and relating it to my actual project. And then what happens is that that piece of information that I captured will actually show up under my projects. So I can come under that project and then I can see everything that I've captured for that project. This is so, so powerful. So what I can do is that I can actually see 
me making progress on that project. I can see I've read a book about this topic. I've actually captured a YouTube video about this topic. I've actually written three or four notes about this. And then what I can do at any point in time, I can jump back into those notes. So for example, I made a note about making things easier for myself and then related it to this project because obviously it's related to my mindset and it's related about consuming content about my emotions and try to understand myself. So I can actually jump into the page and see what I actually captured. So on March 22nd, I captured this. So this is something that I've made for myself and it actually is super important for me. And I've also related it to a content output. So if I ever want to make a video about this, I can actually come to my specific idea leverage video and then make a complete template from it and everything that I want is already there. By the way, I will cover this specific template and everything next week. Don't worry too much about it. But what happens is under captured sources, I can see that that specific note is there. So when I come to write the script for this video, everything is there for me already. So this video is not going to start from scratch and the actual note for making things easier for myself is already there and I can actually put it into my script and so on and so forth. I think you get the big picture. Don't worry about the implementation of the Readwise database. We will cover this next week. But for now, all you need to do is to understand these properties and to understand the different categories that you have. Instead of focusing on how to put the Readwise integration into here right now, your main takeaway right now is to be able to create an overall structure for your knowledge management system. So what you can do is you can make a list of the things that are important to you for capturing. So for example, do you read a lot of books? Do you watch YouTube videos? Do you care about capturing podcasts and so on and so forth? And then what you can do is that you can actually use tools such as Readwise or Send to Notion or other things to actually capture it into your library. There's a ton of videos out there on how to set up the capture layer for everything, but not so many on the organization level, which is exactly what my video is. I'm talking about the organization and optimization of this system, not about the capture. However, just for the sake of the argument and to make it easier for you guys, I will cover this, which I think is basically 90% of the way there so that you can also learn how to use it yourself. So that's about it about this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget, I will cover the whole Readwise integration, the technical implementation of it for you in a video upcoming very soon. Just start understanding what is in the system and actually start figuring out what you want to capture and how you want to organize this still and express. And more importantly, think about what is your unit of output. My unit of output in my life is YouTube videos. So I use YouTube videos as something that I want to create. And therefore, everything that I capture specifically for YouTube videos will be related to that. Of course, I also capture stuff for my projects and I can relate it to my projects. And when I go to work on that project at any point in time, I have things to start with and I don't have to start from scratch. And these intermediate packets are actually super, super helpful and will allow me to execute on multiple projects in the same quarter and actually put everything on a slow burner and capture different pieces of information for different projects and execute on those projects as I go on. So that's about it. I hope that's clear. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.